This is SOLIDWORKS Basics. We're going to be going through drawing a simple block as an introduction to creating a SOLIDWORKS part. Overall, we're going to start from an orthographic drawing. Um, we're going to use that to then create the, uh, the basic sketch um, to extrude from. That'll create the, the shape of the part overall. And then we're going to use tools like an extruded cut and the hole tool, as well as rounding and fillets to finish up. The source drawing is this SOLIDWORKS Education Lesson 2 part. So you've seen this for uh, classwork uh, back in week 2 and 3. And so we're, we're going to base our part on, the, on this drawing. Switching over to our SOLIDWORKS window, uh, there's a few initial steps that we have to do. So we're going to create a new document, make it a part. Um, and now this we see the, the basic interface. And so when we're doing a new part, we want to, at least for this part, use uh, millimeters as our units, because that's uh, a part like this is, is going to be, as you can see, the, uh, the units here are specified in millimeters. So the way we do that is um, in the document itself, if you right click on the, the head of the model tree, document properties comes up. We control a lot of different aspects of the drawing here, things like annotations, drafting standards. Um, so definitely explore this at your leisure, but for now we're just going to go to units and pick millimeter gram second. You can also customize that later on if we want. So our basic procedure for extruding is going to be starting from the front view, then um, we're going to sketch the outline of the shape and finally trim away the excess lines uh, that we use to draw the initial shape and then dimension it to size. So starting from the extrude tool, we're going to choose the front plane and then this looks like this view down here. We have the, uh, the front view so we're going to draw this overall outline um, to match this shape and dimensions. In the SOLIDWORKS window, we're going to start from the Rectangle tool. And at this point, I'm just going to be relatively sloppy um, with how I decide to draw this shape because I can always add dimensions later. So um, for now, I just drew an arbitrary rectangle. Um, I'm drawing in horizontal and vertical lines and taking advantage of the constraints such as coincident vertical and horizontal that SOLIDWORKS infers. The next step is to use the Trim Entities command. So I'm going to drag my line through and cut away that extra stuff. You'll notice at this point that the outside, these outer dimensions, or sorry, outer lines are black, whereas the inside lines are blue. So this refers to, the, the color difference refers to if the lines are properly constrained, or um, I should say fully constrained. And so what this means is since this point and this horizontal line are constrained, this line can only be extended, it can't be rotated. So we're going to use the Smart Dimension tool just to firm up a few more of these dimensions. So we'll put a dimension on the bottom for 70 millimeters, um, which you can see there. We'll put a dimension on the side for 40. And then we can start dimensioning the internals here as well. So we know this is 30 from the drawing and we know this outer height here is 20. Now, we could dimension this in many different ways, and in fact, we're, we're not limited at this point to choose dimensions um, that you would see in a final drawing. So your goal at this point when you're making these sketches is to choose dimensions that will be easy to use, easy to understand, um, and easy to go back and change later on if you have to change the part. All right, we click the Accept Sketch button in the corner, and then we get this uh, Property Manager window that pops up. I'm just going to drop it down here so it's easier to see. Um, and so at this point, we can specify the depth of our extrusion. So the default is 10. I'm going to choose 40 millimeters. You can type the millimeter if you want, but it'll assume the default unit if not. I hit OK, and that will preview and finally accept our shape. So now we have this 
our first feature, this boss extrude, that gives us the overall outline. And if I go to the front view here, you can see how that shape matches um, our overall outline down here. Okay, so we've done the initial extrusion. Now we're going to choose the extruded cut. So we're going to work from the top surface of the part and then use this cut to um, that, sorry, that's going to cut out this feature from our top view, this little rectangular pocket. So the overall procedure is we're going to sketch that outline, um, again use our rectangle tools, try and constrain it as best we can to reduce the number of dimensions we need, um, and then I'll show you some different cutting modes. Uh, some of them will be more appropriate. In particular, we're going to finally end up using cutting up to a surface. Okay. So we're going to choose extruded cut. I'm going to click on the top here. Um, and so now we have um, we have this top view visible. We're going to draw in a rectangle. Again, I'm not worrying at this point about dimensions. And so I can very quickly decide, okay, I know for my part I can add a dimension between these two that I know is 10 millimeters. I can add a dimension between these two that's another 10. And then finally I can do this another 10. So we've used three dimensions and very quickly have sized this up. You'll notice that I clicked on this edge which gave me this automatic constraint keeping, keeping the edge parallel and coincident with this edge here. So at this point this is enough to, to draw this simple part. Um, a general exercise you want, you're going to want to keep in mind is trying to reduce the number of dimensions if you can do it reasonably. So for example, I'm consuming three dimensions here, um, but maybe I can do this with fewer. And to do that, we can take advantage of some constraints that might not be obvious. So what I just did here is selected a point and drew it at the midpoint of this edge. Now that midpoint was inferred. It doesn't happen by itself um, if you're just drawing an edge, but here it's, it's snapped to the midpoint. And now I can choose, um, if I deselect my point, if I select this point, hold control and select that edge, now it is asking me for what relations might I want to add to this. So in this case, if I select relations, it's assuming, or sorry, if I select features, it's assuming that I want to add geometric relations. And in this case, I want to assign a midpoint constraint. And what that does is lock the midpoint of the point on that edge. So now I can, you can see that when I drag this, it's centered. So the next simplification I can make is that I want to, I want to add, so I'm, I'm just going to select these two lines. And again, it automatically assumes either in this little pop-up menu or in my properties window, um, in my properties window here, sorry, that uh, we want to make some kind of relation between them. I'm going to click equal, and so that that basically says these are going to be equal lengths here. Now, this it may actually be more useful to make this and this equal here. Um, so that's that's what we're going to do now. So th this constraint here is actually a little redundant. We can get rid of that. Um, but now you can see that the entire all the geometry is constrained um, to basically one dimension of movement. Then I can add a dimension on this, and it's kind of arbitrary which one I choose. I'm going to say this is now 20 millimeters. So what I've done here is reduced the dimension count from three. This geometry is constrained not by three separate dimensions, but just by one. So it's debatable which is better, um, and it always comes down to what you're trying to draw and what you're trying to accomplish. This is more flexible in one way in that you can uh, you can very quickly change the shape in uh, of this geometry in a way that you want but if you wanted to make this cut say five millimeters deeper along the uh, X direction then you'd have to delete and reconstrain. So it's a trade-off between convenience and flexibility.
Okay, so at this point we're done with the sketch. Um, so I'm just going to realign our view here. We'll do. Um, there. Click accept. Um, and now we can see that it's asking us how deep do we want to make the cut. So um, the simplest, most straightforward way to do this is to specify our cut depth directly. Um, if I make that 20 millimeters, for example, that's the size I need. And that's that's your good starting point. It's, it's simple, it's easy to understand. Um, if you want to be a little bit more creative, try and eliminate some dimensions, you can use these other options. The common ones that I typically use are through all, which, as the name suggests, puts the cut through everything, as we can see here. Um, we can do up to next, which is often the same as through all on a simple part, but is not necessarily because um, if you have a part with multiple edges, this will only extrude up to the first opposite facing surface. In this case, however, an even cleverer option is going to be up to surface. And what we do here is specify a surface where the cut should intersect. So I just selected this horizontal face. You can see it looks the same as if we had clicked 20 millimeters in a blind cut. So now we've created that extruded cut and we have this nice uniform surface here. So moving on, um, we're going to start cutting a hole to correspond to um, this hole in the top here. We've, this is going to be a 20 millimeter diameter hole that is, according to our drawing here, centered 20 millimeters away, 20 millimeters here. So it's sort of at the, the center of this square here. So we have our overall dimensions and depth. So this is our overall procedure. Um, we want to define the whole properties first, and then um, typically then we will, at, at that point, we can um, place the hole on the surface. So we click Hole Wizard. Once that appears, um, we can see that uh, we're going to choose among these hole types. We want to just use our standard uh, hole. We're going to choose ANSI metric. Um, you could choose at this for this one. It doesn't really matter, but you're basically choosing a standard uh, drill size. And so I've we have this big menu of standard drill sizes here. In this case, I'm going to choose 20 millimeters. Um, and in general, these standard drill sizes are nice to use because if you're going to manufacture something like this, unless it's a very precise bored hole, um, you're probably going to use a drill bit to make it. So if you're using a standard drill size, then it's going to reduce the cost of a part. Okay, so we've specified that hole size. Um, now we want to specify the end condition. In this case, the easiest is probably just to go up to next which will go through to the back face of the part um, down to here. And so at this point, we can, we've pretty much specified everything. We're not using any countersinks. So now we can switch to the, from the type tab to the positions tab. So at this point now we can say, well, where do we want to locate this point? So when we click, where the first click places the sketch on a plane, um, in the second click, you can see it previewing this whole location. It creates a point where we want the hole to be. Now, at this point, I can create multiple points, and it will understand that, you know, let's say I want to apply multiple holes. Um, so in this case, I'm going to right-click and start dimensioning. Um, so I know I just want the one hole, so I don't want to place more than one point. So uh, in this case, I'll be... You know, we'll do this quick and easy. We know the whole, um, so we'll specify that carefully. Um, we want to create a dimension from each perpendicular edge, and we can quickly make that 20 millimeters. Um, and so, again, there are fancier geometric constraints that we could apply here, but for something like this, just a few dimensions is the easy way to go. When we're all done, we hit check. Um, that accepts the whole position. And now the hole is complete. The last step is to apply uh, fillets and camphors to this part to complete it as drawn. Um, so the again, we want to apply these type of features 
as late in the drawing as possible, unless they are considered like integral features of the part. So typically fillets are a subtle modification of a part to keep, um, basically to, to relieve stress or something like that. So we can, it's usually safe to grate them towards the end. So looking back at our source drawing, um, we're looking at this camfered edge here is what we're going to create, and then these two fillets here. So in SolidWorks, uh, it's pretty easy to do that with the fillet and camfer tool here. Um, we click fillet, select the edges that we want um, to apply a radius to, and then specify the radius that we want here. So at that point, it's pretty much all you have to do. You can select the preview mode if you want to see what it looks like. Um, and for a simple edge, you usually don't have to use Fillet Expert or any of this other stuff. Um, but it's there if you want to explore. So we hit check, and now that applies our, our nice clean fillet there. Next, we're going to use a camphor on this edge. And we can see in the preview that 10 millimeters doesn't exactly specify what we want. Now, there's a couple ways we could do this. We could do 20 millimeters. And we know from geometry that this is, uh, it's going to be 20 on both sides based on our drawing. Um, and so we can see that here, 20 and 20. So that's probably good enough for now. You can also change the mode to distance and distance. We can do equal distance. Um, all of these are going to be equivalent. The important thing is just to get that dimension correct. So then we apply the camphor. And at that point, the part is complete. So it's using these just a few of our, our simple modeling tools, we can create um, a fairly complex part like this in 3D, and all of it is procedural. So let's say, for, for example, I could um, edit, you know, go to edit this feature. I could change how deep it is, make it 50 millimeters deep. Um, and so there's you can see now how this is where those constraints that we want uh, can help or hurt us. So for example, this inside cut was preserved. It's still 20 millimeters and it's still centered. So maybe this is the kind of thing we want to happen if we stretch it out. The hole that we were lazy with is still dimensioned to 20 millimeters and 20 millimeters. So it didn't scale as nicely. So to quickly review, um, we've started from this orthographic drawing, um, reading the dimensions off of each of these views. We created an extrusion using the extrude tool. We created an extruded cut to cut out the top feature here. And uh, we created a hole and then some fillets and camphers to finish out the part. The result was this nice block that we see here. Um, the hole and cut out features nicely centered. So that's it for uh, lesson two. So give this a shot and uh, let me know in class or in comments or if you encounter any difficulties. Good luck.